two things are different. I suppose the men's field is twice as competitive, so lots of fast runners. But also, the whole, <laughs> I feel like the whole Penang Way has been frozen, um, which is good and bad. So that makes it faster. But then also, by this stage, you feel it in your hips and your knees. Um, so a blessing and a curse, but you know, it's all good. to the NSTP. I'm from Spain, 25 degrees. <laughs> it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be an enjoyable day, I think. It's just glad to be out. We've lost each other a couple of times, but it definitely helps me with Mark's done it three times or something, so. Twice, twice. Twice, twice, so, yeah. I'm finding out what happens when you turn up unfit, which is you go quite slow, but it means you can enjoy the experience more. You're not like, oh, I've got to get out the checkpoint, got to get out the checkpoint. So you really enjoying it, really enjoying it. I feel a lot better after I sleep, even if it's just a few minutes, it really helps. I got a good sleep just there, so, yeah, feeling good now. I'm not used to people. I've been alone for 12, 12 hours or something. <laughs> to be honest, I'm talking to myself quite a bit, humoring myself. Um, and uh, I like this, uh, this kind of weather, the winds, the snow. Uh, this is what I'm after. So I'm, I'm entertained. <laughs> Since the race started, I think I had about two hours of sleep or something. And I'm starting to feel that a little bit on my the motor functions. Not a big problem, but but uh, you can feel it. A bit stumbling here and there. Pretty much back to Ulster now. Should be in before it gets dark. Yeah, I've also had a really, really great time. I always do. I keep coming back to the spine race. And I'm sure I'll be waiting for the ballot to open in a few weeks time when this one's finished. Now the weather's really, it was amazing yesterday with the sunshine and the blue skies and everything. And today it's been a bit more gnarly. John came through with the chili whack noodles at Greg's hut. It was all good. A bit slippery underfoot, a bit tired. I'm looking forward to some food. tired this morning when we set off but that was 1am it's always difficult in the dark but yeah we've, I'm feeling actually quite good now we're glad to get up to checkpoint get some food get some sleep and then uh, see what the weather's going to do before we decide as and when we're going to go enjoying the Pennine way bizarrely enjoying the weather but don't do well sleep deprived need a proper sleep very similar things in terms of distance but the terrain and the time of year just the amount of time it's dark i think that's the this makes it much more challenging I'm starting to see some weird things around <laughs> i'll get a bit more sleep at langdon but yeah okay i think i had an hour and a half at hawes and then i had 15 minutes in a shooting shed today so i'm gonna get a couple of hours there we'll see my eyes have just started hurting with the snow and stuff, so I've gone for the full heavy weather. <laughs> the hardest bit so far has been the Cam High Road. It was at um, the end of 36 hours of not much sleep, and it was just never ending and relentless. I thought I wouldn't carry on after the war, to be honest, um, but then the checkpoint, I had no miracle workers, turned me around and felt really good coming out of wars. So that's good. Just hopefully they'll be able to do the same here. Uh, it's been pretty brutal, if I'm honest. Uh, I've got no idea what day four is going to be like. We'll just have to wait and see. But um, Crossfell is 
beckoning sometime overnight and um, all I can do is keep my fingers crossed that the um, weather's kind to me. Obviously the physical challenge is, is immense and my legs hurt and you know I'm physically tired um, but it's just having that that reason to keep pushing and going and so that that's been the hardest thing it's, it's been finding out about myself and just proving to myself that I could do something like this almost their self-worth um, I've not done it for anyone else it's purely for me it's about recognizing that um, I can step up to the challenge and so far so good so um, I'll see if I can get all the way there my stepkids and uh, everyone behind me, thank you so much, I'm doing my best. You can feel the clock is going all the time and I just need to move forward. Eating, my stomach was just uh, not playing ball for the first two days but now he's uh, back on track. So, And then uh, yeah, keeping the body in one piece as well, uh, just uh, wear and tear. <laughs> We form spine bubbles working together and they, they, they form as you go. So you form a spine bubble with one group and then it might change as, as the event goes on. That's one of the magical things about the event really. I mean today has just been really It's good. just been such it's a good so day, good. it's hard to... I'm sorry, today, it, there aren't I don't any know what negatives on the face. Yeah. They, they lie, the spine's just fun. It actually, I mean... It's just been really fun. Yeah, it has just been really good fun, yeah. hasn't it? Good evening. This evening I'm in Bellingham, which is CP5 from the perspective of a runner in the Fall Montaigne Winter Spine Race, or CP3 for the runners in the Challenger North and MRT Challenge North. I'm currently hiding out in the cottages behind the checkpoint because frankly, the weather outside is atrocious. Now, in the fight for top spot in the Montaigne Winter Spine Race, we've seen almost a repeat of scenes from last year. We've seen a fight for the win between Jack Scott and Damien Hall. Jack Scott came through Bellingham not all that long ago. He's looking sharp, he's looking focused, he's looking determined, and at our best estimate, has a lead of somewhere around two or three hours over Damien Hall as we go into the night. And in third position currently is Conrad Rawlick. He's been consistent, He's being calm, he's being collected, and he is moving incredibly well up the course. In the fight for the places on the female podium, there's been no change at the very front. Claire Banworth continues to dominate, but there's been a change behind her. Hannah Rickman has dropped into third position, and Lucy Gossage, 14 times Ironman winner, I don't know if I mentioned that, has moved into second place. The leader of the Montaigne Windspine Challenger North is Joe O'Leary, and that lead is almighty. He left Bellingham some time ago, aiming for Burness and then straight off over the Cheviots to the finish line. And if you look at that tracker, you can see that Joe O'Leary is well ahead of course record pace in the Challenger North. We could well see yet another record broken. Behind him is Tom Hollins, our winner of the full Montaigne Spine Race in 2017. And in third position at the moment is Nikki Arthur, who stole third place from John Shield earlier today. That puts John Shield as third in the male open category. It means that Susan Forks is the second female athlete. And for the third female, you're gonna have to wait until morning. There are currently a few runners fighting for that position. It's a particularly exciting day. Having moved the start of the Challenger North forward to Monday at 8 a.m., we've ended up in a situation where the front end of both races are merged together on the course. We're gonna see those two races resolved over the next 24 hours. So for the leaders, for the people at the very front, we're looking at the last night of the race, but that is nowhere near true 
for the bulk of the pack, in particular, those runners who are furthest down the course at the moment. So as always, as exciting as it is, watching these elite athletes do these incredible things, I would remind you that there is a long, long way to go, that we have plenty of runners out there who have another night and maybe another night and maybe another night and more ahead of them. Stick with us, keep following those dots.